can hold it up a little later, Catherine. That's fine. If yeah. Okay. Either way. I got a resume behind me anyway, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> the visuals are there. They the visuals me. are there. <laughs> Uh, this week, we are joined by Catherine Troutman, and she is the author of 28 books on federal job seeking. I'm sure the first book on the federal, blah, the federal resume, the Federal Resume Guidebook in 1996 when the government went online with their job site, usajobs.gov, which I've applied to, it's really struggled with, so I'm appreciative of her being here today to talk us through some stuff. She's the Federal Resume Guru, um, founder and president of the Resume Place, Inc., and i uh, I guess services the community of Baltimore, D.C., and kind of that general area, yeah? Yeah, D.C., Baltimore, that's right, yeah. Great. Um, so we're, we're having her on to kind of tell us all, all the things. Um, so thank you for being on with us. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to share any important tips that I can to help people get through USA Jobs because I know it's difficult and the jobs are awesome. So let's talk. Yeah, well, okay, how did you become the Federal Resume Guru? Like what was that process? It was because of the book, you know, when, when you write <laughs> ever on a topic, you become a subject matter expert. So that year when I wrote that book, I taught government agency, federal resume writing, current feds to help them get promoted. I taught 125 days that year because current federal employees had to convert from a long green 171 form to a resume. So that was big. And uh, I created a format to do that. And it helped everybody. And it still does. I'm still teaching that same class to federal employees as well as to first timers. So they need they need some tips and formats to do it. And, and for yourself, were you already in a career within the federal government when you started to kind of do this this work? No, no. I was on K Street uh, doing resumes for lobbyists and lawyers and law students and designing them to make them look pretty. We were also doing 171 forms that they were so long, like 30 pages long. So when when I was very familiar with the 171 and very familiar with the resume. So when I got the call saying the government's going to accept a resume like the rest of the world, at first I said, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, wait a minute, if that's true, I could be the first person to write a book on it. So I was. <laughs> so there. <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, that see a need, fill a need kind of kind of mentality? I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, then, uh, can for those that don't know, or maybe those that aren't, aren't familiar with the the service, I know, I know, definitely, there's a way to you know just get on the website and apply. But can you take us through like what what's the difference of a federal resume um, between maybe one from the private sector? Yeah, I can tell you um, pretty easily. The biggest thing difference is that the average length of a federal resume is five pages. Private sector average length is two. So there's a lot of difference in content and length. And the federal human resources people want to see more on paper about what you've done. They will not infer any skills or abilities that you have. If they're not on paper, then they don't exist. So that's why it's longer than private sector. Private sector people can just wing it. You know, they like somebody they're in. (laughs) Lots of numbers. Yeah. yeah Wait, right. so when you say they don't refer, meaning that if you have like a, a job title that we kind of, you know, pro, you know, program manager, project manager, things like that, that's not enough. You need to make sure that you have in the details, like the specific responsibilities, things like that. Absolutely. You could say you're a project manager, but if you don't describe the project, the title of the project, the scope of the project, your role that you played in the project, your actions, the uh, results, the what you went through, the challenges, then, then the project is not there. You have to give details about project management. Or let's say you apply for a job as a program analyst and you do not have the word analyst in the resume. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get best qualified. You're not going to be eligible because that word analyst, and I've seen resumes like that all the time where they apply for a job and one important key word isn't even in the resume. And that's a deal breaker right there. Go, go ahead, Daniel. Well, yeah. I just was wondering, since you are the guru on federal resumes, do you feel as though this, like, is it better to have this kind of resume, the federal resume? Do you feel like it's more encompassing? Well, yeah, for federal it is. It's, it's a little too long for private sector. But if you were going to write both resumes, I would say that you should start with the federal resume first and, you know, use use my book and my samples to make it correct and give all the details and then back it down to two pages. 
because you'll have a better, better content. Because what we emphasize, the reason that we can make it five pages is that we add those project details to the resume. Or let's say you're a student and you just graduated with a bachelor's and master's. We would like you to put your capstone project description in like five sentences and the title of the project, the title of your thesis and five sentences that describes it and descriptions of other major team projects during school. Private sector people don't do that. But federal, you really want to spell it out and add those details. And then the same thing goes for entry level or mid-career person. People don't add accomplishments and details and projects in their resume. They just skip it. And, and then all that content is just missing and HR won't see it. it I guess I asked the wrong question. Why is it like this? Why, why do you need this all encompassing uh, resume that like spans five pages? Okay, because so the vacancy announcement will have a section called requirements and then it will say specialized experience and it will say you must show that you have one year specialized experience in one, two, three, four. Now, if you don't have those four items in your resume, you will not get best qualified for that job. It's in black and white in every announcement, requirements, specialized experience, and it lists it. It's usually a small paragraph, too. It's not horrible. It's not bad. But why did the government decide to do this, I guess? Why Why did the federal government de- – have, have you researched this that's going on? Like why this um, – why is this um, so different from the private sector? Because there is a law called Merit Principles and uh, Title V, and it's written that the resume in paper, black and white, must show the qualifications of the person in order for them to get best qualified. It's, it's a rule. And if HR people don't see those words that match the announcement, you're, you're done. You're out. And that's what people don't know. They don't know how serious it is that they match the resume to that little section called specialized experience. They don't know. So, so it's, it's basically to try to make the process more objective because you're really having to prove in the document itself, your qualifications. It's not about these connections that come outside the space. No, you can have connections and that'll be awesome, but you still have to prove for HR to sign you off. You have to prove it in paper and that's what makes it longer is because you have to cover those things. And then sometimes it's more than like four items, sometimes like 10 items that they want Mm -hmm. because they include something called knowledge, skills, and abilities in the announcement sometimes, and you have to cover those as well. So the announcements tell you what they want. If you know how critical it is, a lot of people think in the announcement, you have to cover all the duties and responsibilities. You don't really, you do have to cover specialized experience required. Look for that. Yeah. What about gaps? I think one of the interesting things we've had conversations with recently, especially as people are taking time for themselves and maybe have three, six months, sometimes even a year if they've been furloughed. Um, how how do you recommend or work with folks to, to, to address that in, like, in the federal resume space? Well, it's really good news. Um, if you have a three or six month gap, you just skip it and you okay. put in the dates, the chronology that's real. Because like I said, HR is looking for one year specialized experience or two years specialized experience. And they don't care if it's this year or five years ago or seven years ago. They're not looking for every date and filling in all the gaps for the dates. So for students, for military spouses, for people who did take off, for the pandemic people who took off, you know, restructured their career, doesn't matter. Just skip the dates. Now, if you took off five years to take care of, you know, family, children, parents, you could say family management, five years. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, so what are some of the uh, common mistakes? We've talked about not not putting in the, the actual descriptions or, or addressing those specific requirements, but what are some other things that you see as a really common uh, challenge that people have? Well, a common mistake people will make is uh, in the USA Jobs announcements, they they have all these hiring authorities like a U.S. citizen and a competitive federal employee and a veteran, a military spouse. People will, let's say you might not have any hiring authority like me. I don't. Um, If I applied to a military spouse job, I would be rejected. Hmm. So you have to read who may apply to decide what job would work for you. That's a really common mistake. 
Um, if you don't upload the documents they ask for, if they require a transcript and you don't upload it, you're done. You're finished right there. The uh, USA Jobs application itself is a test. There is something called an assessment questionnaire that goes along with every application and you have to score your skill level in the questionnaire. It's really shocking. It's a, for real a test and you want to try to get 100 and it's tricky, really tricky. It will give you five options that you can answer. One, the first answer that's terrible is I know nothing about this. <laughs> the next one says I have done this. Um, I know about this, but I've never done it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> next one is I've done it supervised. And the next one, I, I do it independently. The last one says I'm an expert or I'm a supervisor or I train other people and help other people with this. So check off the highest level on the questionnaire. The questionnaire is very tricky. So just give yourself all the credit you can on the questionnaire and take your time through the questionnaire. So not only do you have to have a five page resume that matches, like I said, that questionnaire is very critical and you can preview the questionnaire in the announcement. You can click preview and look at it to see how long it is or how horrible it is. Or if you cannot come anywhere near highest qualified, you like need to give it up, you know? So look, look at the preview of the questionnaire and just don't get upset. Just stay calm. And just breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so this like brings me to a question I have because, as you said, the trickiness of it. Like we, I've looked into federal jobs, and you know there are different levels that you have to be at, and there's, it's a very complicated, just pro, not even the process. Just looking at the actual job itself is complicated to know if yeah. you are even qualified for it. Yeah. So why? Why is it so complicated? Why do, why can I not understand when I'm looking at this if I'm actually even co uh, even qualified for this job? I want to know the answer to that too. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 all I can say is that government, they just have all these rules and regulations. They just make everything complicated, everything from a passport to, you know, a, a U.S. citizenship, everything is complicated and the federal government with the jobs just got worse when they, well, it didn't get worse. Okay. It didn't get worse way back in 96 when it was a 171. They also had written KSAs like five or six full pages, horrible. And so then when they switched off of those KSAs, they got this terrible test, this assessment questionnaire test. The test is easier, but I'm just saying it's really tricky and you got to give yourself credit. Why it is so complicated I don't know. I just heard about something new yesterday, this morning. There's, some, there's something new, brand new. And it is that if you have awards and recognitions like from military or your career or federal, there's certain announcements where they, get, they request this. You put all the awards and honors into a big, long PDF, like really big, keep stacking them on. And then you submit this long PDF. And my client who wrote to me this morning told me it took her two hours to put all the PDFs together. And, 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 and you can get extra points if you do that with your awards and honors. There. Is that so, for any position or just these that, that kind of yeah, ask for it? Just certain ones that say they want to have honors and awards uh, reviewed. And they'll give you extra points for that. Hmm. So, that's a lot of work, but okay. Yeah. Well, you know, they're... The government, did you know the government is the largest employer in the U.S.? It is the largest yeah. employer. It is a large, and it's very, very stable. So mm -hmm. people can stay once you get in You're your in. whole career. You, yeah. you, don't, you don't leave unless the job gets horrible and you have to leave, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, that does happen. But, you know, most people come back. They, they, they give it up after five years and go back. Depends on the administration. Yeah, you may just take yeah, a sojourn you know, for a moment. Sure. Terrible times. You know, you can't stand it. So it's worth it to persevere for the job. But if you don't know the correct way to do the resume, like look, look at one of my books would be a good, good idea. You're going to apply to 70 jobs or more and get nowhere, not get best qualified, not get eligible, terribly upsetting. And um, in my book, my, this book here, this is a, this book is a 10 steps to a federal job book. Step mm -hmm. nine is track and follow up on your applications. You can actually find out why you were not best qualified if you track and follow up. You can. 
What kind of feedback do they give? Oh, they tell you that, well, they might tell you didn't submit documents or they might tell you you did not show the one year specialized experience or you did not show the correct coursework that was in the announcement. They're mistakes that people make. HR people will send you emails or they will answer a phone call. They will, if you write to them and say, you know, questions about announcement number 10101 and say, I wonder why I was not best qualified for this position. I do believe I have the one year specialized. They'll write back to you. So I coach my clients all the time. Like if I help them and I know they're qualified and they come back not best qualified, I just say, write to HR. What, what did they want? You can do that. And that's really good, but people don't know that they can do that. They, they're intimidated. They think they can't write to HR. They can. They can. So that that's an interesting I, – can you apply – should you apply to a job more than once then? Like let's say you get this feedback. I know it might be too late by then or whatever it is, but let's say it's not. Should you apply again to the job? Absolutely, yeah. You fix your resume the way they say – Whatever they say that they need it, change it, resubmit. The job might come open again. It might close and come up and again. For sure. Yeah. Resubmit. So it feels like it's, it's not necessarily like best qualified per se. Or I mean, there, there's plenty of people that are qualified. <laughs> no, sorry. It's just more of like, it's, it's, I think a reminder that it's not necessarily about your qualifications. Like you, were, you, you definitely could be very qualified for a role and never actually, you know, be interviewed for it or called. And that's partly because of the system that exists. Or that you're, could, you're having to get through. It could be the resume. It could be the resume does not show it clearly. You know, they the HR people actually read resumes. They don't do any artificial intelligence. So if you submit a resume that's really small type, and let's say the one year specialized experience is on page two, oh, good luck. Mm. That's not good <laughs> it needs to be on page one. If They read resumes with their eyes, you know? So having that important education or experience on page one is, or two is really important. And, and another tip I'll, I'll say while we're talking is that if you're a recent graduate, you have a new degree, you should uh, put it above work history, put education first, and mm-hmm. then work history second. Now, if you use the builder, there's a builder in, inside the USA job system. If you use the builder, education comes at the end. So don't use it unless mm-hmm. you have to. Don't use a builder. Use an upload version and put education, your courses, your thesis, and your skills all on page one, then then work history, and that will present your experience better. And that's for, for first degree, second degree graduate, any, yeah, if, you, um, if you're just re entering the workforce? Page yeah. one. Okay. I have a curious question for you. Do you think that this system create uh, gives you better candidates? You mean the uh, employer? Yeah, like, does it give better candidates to go into the United to the government than it would say, like, the private sector system that goes on? I'm not really sure. I I talked to an HR person um, recently, and he said that it makes him so sad and upset when he sees someone who is really, really well qualified for the job that he cannot say that they're best qualified for because it doesn't show the education or courses, and he's just so sad, but he can't do anything about it because people don't know how to do this resume correctly and present the information correctly. I don't know that I could say that. I I don't know. I wish the resume was easier. I wish, I wish the questionnaire would disappear. It's very, it's very tricky. The questionnaire. Yeah. They do their best. They do their best to hire the best and brightest people. It's a very, very laborious. I, I think if it was simpler, they would get more qualified people because a lot of really smart, qualified people don't want to do this. They just say, no, I'm not doing it. I'm going corporate. I'm not. I tried it. I applied to 50 jobs. I'm done. Well, they didn't have education, skills, or whatever up front. We help a lot of people. We consult with people. We're, we, we, we help so many people get, get through this, even if we just do a consult. Like if you were to send me your resume, an announcement. I could tell you everything wrong with your resume. What to fix? One, two, three, four, five. That would help you. you know, There'd be a lot of things wrong too. Really There'd be a lot of things wrong. Like <laughs> Catherine would be like, "Do it all again." I'm nice about it. I'm really. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, because I, to your point, I have tried to apply to federal jobs and I get so frustrated because a, I can never understand whether or not I'm qualified to actually do the job. And then B, 
I've like rewritten my federal resume a million times and I'm just like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is good. Like who knows at this point. Are you find yeah. audio visual specialist or. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a tip. Okay. Here, I'll give you a tip. Any job that's information arts, you have to have specific um, projects, papers, press releases, uh, written works. So you need to have the title. Let's say you did a complicated press release for a very important scenario. You have to write about it. You have to write about that press release, put the title of it in, the research that you did on that press release, the date, who you interviewed, what the outcome was, how many media hits you got. And then that that will help you to get best qualified and help you to get referred to a manager also because you told a press release public affairs story in the resume. Hmm. Yeah, not a laundry list, a story. See, that's interesting because that is, we've heard from other coaches for private sector um, resumes and it's more about like under, explain to someone what you did, like how, what your accomplishments are. And that's what that seems to be. But oh, just yeah. in more minutiae, I suppose, just like really going into the gritty detail. Oh, um, absolutely. Go into the detail. So you would want to have five or seven public affairs examples in your resume that were like five sentences each describing the scenario, what was happening, what you did, your research. That's what we tell everybody. Have five or seven <laughs> accomplishments that are not not one liner. Don't give me just eight words. I want five sentences. <laughs> it's hilarious that Catherine thinks I go into public affairs. Catherine, nobody wants me to talk for them. Nobody. I'll oh tell no, you that. no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I so. You need to talk to me later. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bring you. One of the things I was talking to a friend who just got a new position and he had um, used the survey and like gone back and saw, saw what the questions that they were asking about and reinserted that into his resume. And I think that was the first time that he first, you know, really started seeing success um, with that survey itself is, is you, you call it tricky. And is, is it tricky just because it's like self-promotion? Like you're having to really say like, I, I excel at all of these things or is it tricky because, you know, they're actually not expecting all everyone to put fives for every question. Well, it's really tricky because people deflate their scores I see. naturally. They, they just all, score they score themselves one. low. Yeah. They'll, they'll deflate just because they don't want to brag and they don't want to be you know you know talking about themselves. Uh, people have so much trouble giving themselves credit for what they do, and so when I teach the classes, I, I just make it really clear: you're either the supervisor, you're the expert, or you help other people with this topic. Or you train other people with this topic and helping other people with this topic that happens all day long, right? Mm, yeah. I help them set up my microphone. Okay, I'm gonna eat. All right, I got it. <laughs> 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 I help that guy over there. <laughs> so you should embellish. I guess not embellish is not the right word. You should like really promote yourself when you're trying to do these things and understand I, that you the word yeah. promote is really good. You absolutely do have to promote yourself with those accomplishments and the questionnaire at the highest level possible. And um, just know that, you know, if you don't get a score of 100 or 95 or, or like 90 on the questionnaire, they don't even look at your application. The resume never even hits their desk because mm -hmm. they've got the numbers right on the screen. You can see 195, 90, 85, whatever. They read the 100s. I don't know what all the scores are, but, you know, they read the highest level. So this, the questionnaire is kind of like a major screen out, but hmm. then, then there is the resume, which is like another, it's like a written test has yeah. to match that one year specialized and show the qualification. So if you just concentrate on the announcement on the section that says qualifications, concentrate on that and make sure your resume matches that section, that will help a lot tremendously and yeah. really pay close attention to each sentence and match each sentence in the resume. It's very thorough. It's like research. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who who should be seeking out your your support? Like who are the type of people that need or would benefit from like consultation or working with you on these things? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know it. <laughs> oh, well, well I, um, everybody, government contractors, they need us so bad because they've got so much government experience and they want to scoot over and get a fed job, you know, uh, military veterans coming out of the military. They need our help. Military spouses, private sector people, IT, cyber, Intel, public, you know, uh, public affairs and, um, you know, public health, 
so many jobs in the government, so many medical jobs. The VA is hiring like crazy. Mm -hmm. Any medical job you can dream of, the VA is hiring. There's 264 VA hospitals in the government. So, you know, you could do contract specialist, uh, administrative program analyst, statistician, data scientist, so many jobs. So many, you really need to just look at USA Jobs, type a couple of words in there, type your geographic location, and you can scroll for your salary. So if you wanna make 85, you can look at all the jobs for 85,000. You don't have to look at the 47 and the 135. So you can do screening quite easily on USA Jobs and find any jobs that might be good for you and just take your time and consider it because the job could last you a long time. The benefits are great. The retirement, health benefits, you know, promotion potential is all good. It, it's a lot of work, but I know people who get the job, they're just so happy they can't stand it, you know, <laughs> party time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, awesome. So if the if, if anyone out there is in that in that space and wanted to to either find your work, like where where do they go to, to find you, Catherine? The website is resume place.com. And the books are there for samples and they can sign up for a one hour consult, which is affordable and amazing. There's the, the main book, Federal Resume Guide book. Uh, and we write resumes. We teach classes in government. I do train the trainer. We do it all. Everything I do has to do with federal resume writing and helping people get into the government. I've got about 15 people that work for me, trainers and coaches and editors and everything else. So it's very, very, very good service and been doing it a long time. So get help if you really want a federal job. Mm -hmm. Really. Cool. Well, yeah. thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I hope, I hope it helps some people. Let me know. Oh, I'm sure it will. <laughs> <All right. laughs>